Excerpt from Wounded by Love, The Life and the Wisdom of St. Porphyrios. The Christian religion transforms people and heals them. Our religion is the religion of religions. It is from revelation, the authentic and true religion. The other religions are human, hollow. They do not know the greatness of the triune God. They do not know that our aim, our destiny, is to become gods according to grace, to attain likeness with the triune God, to become one with Him and among ourselves. These are things the other religions do not know. The ultimate aim of our religion is that they may be one. Here the work of Christ finds completion. Our religion is love, it is eros, it is enthusiasm, it is madness, it is longing for the divine. All these things are within us. Our soul demands that we attain them. For many people, however, religion is a struggle, a source of agony and anxiety. That's why many of the quote-unquote religiously minded are regarded as unfortunates, because others can see the desperate state they are in. And so it is, because for the person who doesn't understand the deeper meaning of religion and doesn't experience it, religion ends up as an illness, and indeed a terrible illness, so terrible that the person loses control of his actions and becomes weak-willed and spineless. He is filled with agony and anxiety and is driven to and fro by the evil spirit. He makes prostrations, he weeps, he exclaims, he believes that he is humbling himself. In all this, humility is a work of Satan. Some such people experience religion as a kind of hell. They make prostrations and cross themselves in church and they say, We are unworthy sinners. Then as soon as they come out, they start to blaspheme everything holy whenever someone upsets them a little. It is very clear that there is something demonic in this. In fact, the Christian religion transforms people and heals them. The most important precondition, however, for someone to recognize and discern the truth is humility. Egotism darkens a person's mind. It confuses him. It leads him astray to heresy. It is important for a person to understand the truth. Long ago, when people were in a primitive state, they didn't have houses or anything. They would go into caves without windows. They would block up the entrance with stones and branches so that the wind didn't blow in. They didn't realize that outside there is life, oxygen. When he is enclosed in the cave, a person is worn down. He becomes ill. He is destroyed. Whereas when he is outside, he is revitalized. Can you understand the truth? Then you are out in the sun, in the light. You see all the magnificence of creation. Otherwise, you are in a dark cave. Light and darkness. Which is better? To be meek, humble, peaceful, and to be filled with love? Or to be irritable, depressed, and to quarrel with everyone? Unquestionably, the higher state is love. Our religion has all these good things and is the truth. But many people go off in another direction. All those who deny this truth are psychologically ill. They are like those children who became delinquent or antisocial because they lost their parents or because their parents divorced or quarreled. And all those confused people find their way into various heresies. The confused children of confused parents. But all these confused and antisocial persons have a strength and perseverance and achieve a great many things. They succeed in bringing normal and peaceable people into subjection. They influence other like-minded people and they prevail in the world because they are in the majority and find themselves followers. Then there are others who, although they do not deny the truth, are nevertheless confused and psychologically ill. Sin makes a person exceedingly psychologically confused and nothing makes the confusion go away. Nothing except the light of Christ. Christ makes the first move. Come unto me, all you who labor. Then we accept this light with our good will, which we express through our love towards him, through prayer, through our participation in the life of the church, and through the sacraments. Often neither labor, nor prostrations, nor crossing ourselves attract God's grace. There are secrets. The most important thing is to go beyond the formal aspects and go to the heart of the matter. Whatever is done must be done with love. Love always understands the need to make sacrifices. Whatever is done under coercion always causes the soul to react with rejection. Love attracts the grace of God. When grace comes, then the gift of the Holy Spirit come. 
The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long sufferance, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self control. These are the things which a healthy soul in Christ should have. With Christ, a person is filled with grace and so lives above evil. Evil does not exist for him. There is only good, which is God. Evil cannot exist. While there is light, there cannot be darkness, nor can darkness encompass him because he has the light.